Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the optional memorial of Our Lady of Lourdes. How beautiful is this feast day? I think we all know the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes, and we heard of it, right? Lourdes is a place in France, and it was there that our Blessed Mother appeared to this young girl called Bernadette. Ah, what a beautiful story. What a beautiful gift to the church, this apparition. Because the apparitions of the Blessed Mother are gifts to the church for all of us. Not just to Bernadette, not just to the person that the Blessed Mother appeared to. This apparition is a lesson for the entire church. Our Blessed Mother speaks on behalf of her son. And she gives the beautiful instruction and you know what the instruction is? Pray. Confession. Which is conversion. And to make that turn in your life. Right now, we're getting ready for Lent. Ash Wednesday, February the 17th, right? And it's a beautiful day in which the entire church is on retreat. But it's a season in which we turn from a bad behavior and follow the way of God. So this apparition that happened in France, in Lourdes, France, we say Lourdes, but it's really Lourdes, France, L-O-U-R-D-E-S, and the S is silent. This apparition that happened in Lord France to this beautiful young Bernadette is an apparition for all of us, like I said. It's a lesson in which our Blessed Mother is conveying to Bernadette for the whole world. And that is, we need to really pray. How often do you pray? I hope daily. I hope you take the time to view Mass if you can't get to Mass. And after this pandemic is over, I hope you could come to daily Mass, especially if you're retired. It's a good habit. You know why? Because Mass at St. Mary's is not 6.30 in the morning. It's 9 a.m. We only have one daily Mass, and it's 9 a.m. And it's a time in which a lot of people could come, especially when COVID is over. We would have our school children at Mass on Fridays and our people. We usually get 40 people at daily Mass. Isn't that a nice number? 40 people at daily Mass. So right now it's fluctuating between 40 and sometimes we get 30 or 25, depending on what's you know, snow, rain, you know, difficulties of people getting there to Mass, that is. But we have Mass every single day at 9 o'clock. And I know you know that because it's uh, live-streamed, right? We bring it to your homes. And you're able to watch Mass uh, on your phone or on your computer, right? And enjoy the beauty of the Mass. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Prayer, to pray. And that's what our Blessed Mother was telling Bernadette. There needs to be more of a conscious prayer in people's life. And especially, the Blessed Mother is advocating the rosary. Do you know how to pray the rosary? I was telling the people today that every single day, we should be praying the rosary. When you're waiting for something, like, I don't know if you're in a doctor's office, or if you're waiting in line somewhere, or if you're at the grocery store, they sell rosary rings where you can pray the Hail Mary as you're walking. Maybe you take a walk when the weather's better. You take a walk down one of these trails, and you, you're able to get a rosary in in the morning, you might get a rosary in at night. Start that habit. Making sure that you pray daily. 
meditating upon the mysteries of our Lord and Our Lady. So Our Lady was saying that to Bernadette. She was also talking about a good conversion, a good confession. When was the last time you were at confession? It's a good practice to get into a habit of going to confession. We're going to begin Lent soon. And this is the opportunity to get to confession, clean up the mess, and start afresh. You don't want any of that junk on your soul we call sin. You want to free yourself of the sin. You want to be able to walk the journey. How can you, how can you actually walk the journey of Lent with Christ up to the mountain of Easter? without getting rid of the junk, it's, it's going to weigh you down. You're going to be sluggish. You're going to be saying, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. I can't do this. That's why you have to get rid of the junk. Get rid of the junk in your soul. Go to confession. Make a good confession. Think about it. Go through the Ten Commandments. That would be wonderful. So there you have it the rosary, and confession. When you go to Mass, you're entering into the beautiful mystery of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. What a beautiful setting as you enter into the mystery of the Mass and to receive his risen, glorified body in Holy Communion, to allow yourself to be one with him in his risen, glorified body. Now, very easy, right? It's not a hard task. But why aren't people up for the challenge? So this is what our Blessed Mother is telling Bernadette, right? And she's told, talking to Bernadette have the consequences, really, of sin, death, death. We, we need to turn from our sinful ways and go back to Christ. So Lent is a beautiful time to get ready for this. And so the Blessed Mother on this feast or this optional memorial of Our Lady of Lourdes, we hear our Blessed Mother speak about this. She's telling the people at Mass today that Mary is the new Eve. You have heard that, haven't you? that she's the new Eve. Christ is the new Adam. You know, Eve and Adam were our first parents. In fact, Eve means mother of all the living. But there was a disobedience that happened to the mother of all the living, Eve. She was the first parent, right? There was a big disobedience. And Mary is the obedient one. She's the new Eve. And she crushes the head of the serpent so it does not affect her children. We go to her. I go to her. I was praying to Mary last night, petitioning her to watch over me and the residents where I live. Beautiful act of faith, an act of hope, an act of love. Mary, watch over this place, the place in which Father Keen and I live. Make it a holy house, free from the enemy. I also petition St. Joseph too. Terror of demons, St. Joseph. Got a beautiful print from one of our parishioners. I think it's gorgeous. What do you think of this print? Yeah. Love that print, don't you? That's gorgeous. I want to get that matted and framed. Make sure that I put it on an easel in church, huh? Yeah. And we'll see it, and you'll have a chance to look at it and venerate it. St. Joseph, Terror of Demons. I also have a... Um, a little print of St. Joseph in my car, my visor, Terror of Demons. 
keep me away from all the demons on the road. <laughs> you know, I want to keep myself safe. It's all these things that we have as weapons against the enemy. And I want you to take advantage of them. I really do. So Our Lady of Lourdes, our Blessed Mother is the new Eve. She crushes the head of the serpent who tries to trick us, falling, up, falling into sin. He's trying to make us fall into sin. He knows our Achilles heel. And our Blessed Mother is right there. We pray that rosary. She defends us. That's why I said the Hail Mary is a beautiful prayer, isn't it? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. What a beautiful prayer. As we're meditating upon the scenes of the rosary, the, the scenes of the gospel. Today is Thursday. They're the luminous mysteries, right? The baptism of the Lord. The wedding feast in Cana, Galilee. The proclamation of the kingdom of God. The transfiguration and the institution of the Eucharist. There they are, Thursday. We have a chance to meditate, meditate upon those gospel scenes while we're constantly holding the bead. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. You're just praying that prayer as you're meditating upon the gospel text. It's beautiful. And that's what our Blessed Mother really wants. Even when Bernadette went to the uh, stream and she was, our Blessed Mother asked her for the water and she was digging there, right there. And there was no water. She was so digging and people were laughing at her and walking away. And then what happened? A wellspring of water. It reminds us of the waters of baptism. Conversion. That's what baptism is. It takes away sins. That's what our baptism does, whether we're a baby or an adult, it takes away sin. Sin is both personal and social. Remember that, personal and social. There's Bernadette, following her face with people laughing at her. She did, she listened to Mary. You would say, oh, she listened to the lady. And Our Lady was so kind and loving to her. Bernadette loved when Our Lady appeared to her. Beautiful apparition. So I just want you to think about today, Our Lady of Lourdes. We have a child in our school named Lourdes. In fact, she won the religion bee. Isn't it interesting how I think of these names and they come to me? That's beautiful. Isn't that nice where parents name their children after the Catholic faith? I just think that's, I, I love it. I think it's beautiful. Name after a saint or the Blessed Mother or a place of an apparition. Some, some of the um, Latinos are named Lupe. You know, after Guadalupe. Juan, after Juan Diego. It's where you are in your faith, isn't it? If faith is on your mind and in your heart and on your lips, you know how we do this? Where's your faith? Is your faith weak and out in the world? Or is your faith on your mind and on your lips and in your heart? So everything you do is based upon faith. It's not, a pace of, it's not based upon this world. It's based upon faith. This is the year of Joseph, isn't it? So guess what? We have the consecration to St. Joseph books up on the table by the piano. Now, we just put them there last night. Three are already gone. So please, 
you know, if you want them, make sure you look for them. They're on the table by the piano and they're the 33 day consecration to St. Joseph. It begins on Valentine's Day and it ends on March 19th. Okay, so it's a good practice to get into by consecrating yourself to Joseph, especially the men. We need good Catholic fathers. We need good Catholic husbands. We need good Catholic men. They say if fathers and husbands practice their faith, there's a higher percent rate for the family to practice the faith. I thought, oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? And they did a study on that. They said if the if it means that much to the father, because if it uh, no no offense against women, I, I think it's beautiful that anybody goes to church, practices their Catholic faith. I think that's beautiful. I, I, I'm I love it. But they say about the men, how much children look to their dad. And so Saint Joseph was the the foster father of Jesus. I could only imagine there in the carpenter house, in the home at Nazareth. Beautiful Joseph, his life with Mary and the child Jesus. How much an influence a father has upon his children in the areas of faith. So I want you to think about that. So your husband or your father or your brother or your uncle may not practice the faith anymore. Oh, they went to Catholic school. Oh, they went to CCD or prep. Oh, they did the whole thing. They got their sacraments. Yeah, got their sacraments. Oh, they got their sacraments. They don't do it anymore. Why? You know, they'll give you reasons. It's really them, but they'll give you reasons. The enemy wants you to keep yourself away from the sacraments. So the enemy knows your Achilles heel. That's all I have to say. I have another picture of Joseph right by my computer. Do you see that, Susan? It's pretty. Yeah. Well, I have everything around me. I have the Sacred Heart next to my computer, too. Well, because I just want to surround myself with, with holiness. Mm -hmm. I do. I want to. I want to. I want to be holy. I want to. I want to have always a holiness in my heart, a conversion. In fact, I'll probably be going to confession myself right before Lent. I usually make an appointment with my confessor. My my confessor is also my spiritual director. He's both end, not either or. Some, some people have a confessor and they go to a spiritual director. My priest is both. So when I go, I, I go for direction and I go for confession. And I have to make an appointment because you know, I, I can't go during regular confession. I mean, I don't, it's a direction. I have to, there's a, Point where I just we sit and talk about my spiritual life what's going on so it's always good I mean for priests and religious now lay people also are having spiritual directors but priests and nuns always had spiritual directors seminarians all required as part of the journey there has to be someone who's checking up can be just, you know, and it's not a checkup like, oh, what are you doing? It's it's always to be checking, like always in tune with your spiritual life. How are you doing? You know, because you're a priest, you could get bogged down with all this stuff, right? This stuff is not going to get me to heaven. This stuff will only get me a headache. <laughs> It's not going to get me to heaven, but I have to like say, this is important. 
but my soul is more important. This is important because I'm a pastor. Comes with the vocation. I understand that. Thank God I have a wonderful staff. They really work very hard here. They really do. I'm very proud of all of them. I, and I know you, you know that, but normally people don't know how much work it takes to run a parish. You know, it, it does take a lot of work. You may think to yourself, well, like, what do you guys do all day? Believe me, come and see and we'll show you. We need a helping hand. There's all, there's different departments in, in the parish office center. Different departments. I'm, I'm the pastor. I have my own responsibilities. Sandy Olzinski is my administrative assistant. She's also the administrative assistant to the parish. Sandy also is the coordinator for safe environment and checks on everybody's files. Like everybody has responsibilities in the parish. So we have to make sure that it's a nice, it's a nice balance so that the pastor could do the spiritual work of the church, right? Right. So we all have to make sure that we take time for God and that God gets the first cut. We don't give him leftover, leftovers or sloppy seconds. So confession, rosary, mass, a must, a must. Confession, rosary, mass. Don't compromise. Don't give God sloppy seconds. He wants the first cut of your spiritual life. No, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy. Yes, so everyone's busy. Get over it. God comes first. To him be the honor and glory. He comes first. All this will come and go. You die, another person will jump in your spot. Just like there's, I'm the eighth pastor here. I'm the eighth, not the first, not the se I'm the eighth pastor here. God called me to this parish. You know I love it, and I'm happy to be here. But I stand on the shoulders of all the seven, the seven other ones that came before me. How beautiful is that? Okay, so Our Lady of Lourdes, prayer, conversion. Reminder of baptism. The spring. The spring for eternal life. Right? You want to get to heaven? Go to confession. You want to get to heaven? Pray. You want to go to heaven? Feed the hungry. You want to go to heaven? Give drink to the thirsty. Love your neighbor. Easy. But why is it so difficult sometimes? Go to Joseph. Ita ad Joseph. Have you ever heard of that statement, Susan? Mm -mm. I T E. Ita. Ita. Ad. A D. Joseph. Hmm. Go to Joseph. You know, sometimes you'll see that on uh, altars. They'll write that on. You know the St. Joseph statue? Some, some churches have three altars. The Blessed Mother altar, the main altar, and the St. Joseph. Have you ever seen that? Mm -hmm. And then on the altar, they have chiseled in there, Ita ad Joseph. Go to Joseph. Right? Go to Joseph. What a beautiful, holy, humble man. Go to him. Ask for his blessing upon your dad, your husband, your brother, your uncle, whoever it is. Maybe they're not going to church anymore. They've given up the faith. Eat to Ad Joseph. Go to Joseph. Especially in this year dedicated to him. 
Joseph is the foster father of Jesus and the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He was the protector of the Holy Family. Right? Well, he's the patron of the church, which is our Catholic family. So we go to Joseph, Itaj Ad Joseph. We go to him. Let me read you this prayer. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself as a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. That's right. So on March 19th, is the solemnity of St. Joseph. Remember, it's a free space on the bingo card. That means it's not a day of Lent. So we'll have Mass in church with music. And hopefully you'll have your consecration book and a holy card. Uh, I bought 500 holy cards of uh, St. Joseph that we'll probably give out. There are 100 in a bag. And it's nice. And it has a prayer for the year of St. Saint, uh, Saint Joseph. So we'll make sure we give these out for you to pick up. There's enough for everybody. I got 500. So hopefully you can pick them up and, and have, a, have one in your prayer book. And then we're going to have a um, St. Joseph table, right, Susan? Mm -hmm. In the uh, hall. We're yes. not going to do it in the annex. We're going to do it in a larger space. Mm -hmm. So what is that going to basically be? It's a continental breakfast, COVID style. We'll have things bagged up for you. But we have like a little statue of St. Joseph, two candles, and we have food. And then after mass, you just come over, get a cup of coffee, get a cookie. Blessings of St. Joseph on his day, March 19th. So we're going to have that. I think it's good to celebrate on this day. And Mary Ann is making St. Joseph a beautiful cape for the statue in church. And Peggy is making him an ivy crown. It's a nice masculine crown that goes on top of the statue. It's going to look beautiful. I'm getting excited already. I can't wait. And we have our cards and our books. And we have candles of St. Joseph. You know St. Mary's does it right. You know that. You've been here how long? You know that we're going to take care of you spiritually. We're going to make sure everything is okay and asking God's blessing upon us. Okay, that's enough. I, let, I just want to talk to you. You know, sometimes I, sometimes I wish I just had a cup of coffee to talk to you and just uh, spend some time. Sometimes you're hearing me late at night, depending on how our day was here. And maybe you, you know, fall asleep listening to me. You're like, okay, Father, I'm going to put you on right now. I mean, you might just go to sleep a little bit and you could hear me in the background. Because you know me, I don't have a problem talking. I like to talk to people. I do. I'm an Italian-American. I like to talk to people. So funny, when I was being interviewed as a seminarian, do you like people? Do you like to talk to people? <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem. So, okay, so you, you got the understanding of Our Lady of Lourdes? You know what we're going to do for St. Joseph? We have to go to confession. Don't let Lent pass you by without going to confession. Now, we're going to have a penance service on March 29th, but you, wanna, might, you might want to hit confession at the beginning of Lent and at the end of Lent, okay? Our Lady of Lords, pray for us.